Hi everyone, welcome to the CA classroom. Today we will be discussing about AS1. AS1 is one of the smallest stand-ups but conceptually very very important to understand. AS1 talks about accounting policies. Accounting policies is defined as accounting policies refer to specific accounting principles and the method of applying those principles adopted by the enterprise in preparation and presentation of financial statements. This is one of the definitions which I request you to memorize. It is very, very important and you have to carry it with you for, for a long time. Now, what is the definition? Very simple. Accounting policies refer to specific accounting principles. Let us take an example to understand this. Depreciation is an accounting principle. So, accounting policies refer to specific accounting principles. Depreciation and the method of applying those principles. How do you apply depreciation? You apply depreciation in your books of accounts either by using straight line method or diminishing balance method or also known as WDV method. So accounting policies can be SLM or WDV. Now read the example using depreciation as the example. Accounting policies SLM straight line method refers to specific accounting principles, depreciation principle and the method of applying those principles. Another example, accounting principle is inventory valuation. What is an accounting policy? FIFO or LIFO method. So, accounting policies FIFO or LIFO method refers to specific accounting principles. Inventory valuation is an accounting principle and the method of applying those principles adopted by the enterprise in preparation and presentation of financial statements. To prepare the FS, financial statements include your profit and loss account, balance sheet, notes to account, cash flow statement. What accounting policies is the company following? Now, why do we need this standard? I can just choose SLM or WDE. Now, it is important to understand in exam they will give you SLM or WDE. But tomorrow, once you qualify, you will be in a position to select an accounting policy. You should select whether my company should follow SLM or WDE. How to understand which policy is best for your company is what we will be seeing in the next discussion. In the previous section, we have discussed what is the definition of an accounting policy. Now let's see how to select an accounting policy. Assume you are the CEO of a company and apply these principles. Selecting an accounting policy, there are two things, primary criteria and secondary criteria. Primary criteria says select an accounting policy which gives a true and fair view of the financial statements. Secondary criteria says you select an accounting policy based on the concepts of prudence, substance over form and materiality. Now let us see each of these concepts in detail. Now let us discuss what is true and fair view and how it helps in selecting an accounting policy. Let us use an example to understand the same. Let us assume you are LNT and one of the raw materials you purchase is cement for construction. Timeline beginning of the year, end of the year. Let us say beginning of the year you had purchased 1000 kgs of cement at 250 per kg. Let us say middle of the year you again purchase another 500 kgs of cement at 275 per kg. And let us say towards end of the year you had purchased another 1000 kgs of cement at 300 per kg. Now what LNT does is it purchases cement and puts it in the godown. It does not distinguish between which is purchased in the beginning of the year, middle of the year or end of the year because quality is same throughout the year but only price is changing. Now let us say end of the year out of 2500 kgs only 500 kgs is left in closing stock. Now it is important to assess what price should I take for valuing that 500 kgs? Can I multiply that 500 kgs at opening rate 250 or middle, middle of the year rate 275 
or closing rate 300. For this, I cannot randomly choose a method like FIFO, LIFO or weighted average. You need to choose a method which gives a true and fair view. Now let's say, if you are going to take weighted average rate, you will multiply 1000 into 250, 500 into 275, 1000 into 300 and you will compute a weighted average rate for taking the closing stock valuation. If you are going to take FIFO method, first in first out, then I will assume that good stock which has come in first is used and the entire 500 kgs is available is in stock only from the 1000 kgs it is purchased towards end of the year. If you are going to use last in first out method, then you will assume that this 500 kgs in stock is from the 1000 kgs purchased in the beginning of the year. Now, if I take FIFO, I will take 300. If I take LIFO, I will take 250. Now, LIFO is not a permitted method. However, for the, for the sake of example, which is correct in this example? FIFO, LIFO or weighted average? Now, understand, in this case, prices are showing an increasing trend. Since prices are showing an increasing trend, if you take 250 or if you take weighted average price, if you take an average price, it will not reflect the actual value of inventory. The closest price towards end of the year is only 300 and we can assume that going forward the rate will be close to 300. So if you want 300 to be the value of the inventory, then you have to follow FIFO. So, you need to see what gives a true and fair view. Taking 250 does not give me a true and fair view to reflect the value 500 kgs. Only taking 300 per kg for the 500 kgs gives a true and fair view. Hence, you need to select an accounting policy which gives a true and fair view for preparation of my financial statements. Now, let us discuss what are the three secondary criteria which are relevant for selecting an accounting policy. In the previous section, we had discussed primary criteria for selecting an accounting policy. Now, let us see what is the secondary criteria. First, let me take an example to explain the concept of prudence. Inventory is valued at lower of cost or NRV, whichever is lower as per AS2. What prudence says is, account for all known future losses and but do not account for future gains. Now, let's take an example of Apple company and let's say they are planning to launch iPhone 12 on April 15th. It is priced at 150000 per unit but the actual cost per unit is only 50000 Cost is 50000 Selling price is 1,50,000. Now, they would have already manufactured lakhs of units and as on 31st March, these units will be in the closing stock of the company. Now, my question to you, those Apple units on April 15th will definitely be sold, correct? Everybody will buy it at 1,50,000. So, it is guaranteed revenue for the company irrespective of number of units they produce. Let's say they have produced 2 lakh units. Those will be definitely pre-booked on April 15th. No. However, on 31st March, when they are valuing their closing stock, Apple units, phone, mobile phones, they will value it only at 50,000 and not at 1,50,000. Why? I am assured the return for sure that I will, it will be sold for 1,50,000 without a doubt. But still, why do I record it only at 50,000? Because of concept of prudence. What prudence says, do not account for future revenue. Only account for future expected losses. That is why you see concept called provision for bad debts. We are not... 
still the person has not paid but we are anticipating that he might not pay in creating a provision because of the concept of prudence next let's move to the concept of substance over form substance over form is a very simple concept let's say hyundai has sold a car to you mr x on emi basis emi basis you have purchased the car where you will pay emi over the next 5 years until the 5 years who is the owner of the car legally as per legal papers owner is hyundai until you pay the last emi you will not become the owner of the car but who will be using the car for these 5 years you will use it who will provide depreciation for these 5 years you will provide depreciation so this is the concept of substance over form meaning in substance substance the owner of the car is x because he uses the car he can do anything with the car but technically on form who is the owner hyundai so substance over form says even though on paper hyundai is the owner depreciation will still be provided by x only and hyundai cannot provide depreciation on this car in their books this is the concept of substance over form next is materiality materiality means what is important whether it can be it can be qualitative or quantitative let's take a small example a company with a turnover of 10 lakhs has reported a cash tip of 1 lakh is this material for the company very well yes because for a company with a turnover of 10 lakhs a cash theft of 1 lakh is material let's say a company with a turnover of 5000 crores then will cash theft of 1 lakh be material for them no so materiality is very subjective At the same instance transaction can be material to one person and not material to another person anything which is material which affects the user of financial statement that means the shareholders it affects the shareholders it should be separately reported in the financial statements. Hence, any expense like buying a pen for rupees 10, buying a notebook for rupees 50, do you have to report this separately in your PNL account? No, because it is not material, it does not affect the user's decision. But say a cash theft of 10 crores, this is material and this has to be reported in the financial statements. So these are the concepts using this you will select an accounting policy. Next, we will discuss about can I change my accounting policy? Say for example, you choose SLM in year 1. Can I shift to WDV in year 2? That is the concept we will be discussing in the next section. In the previous section, we had seen what are the secondary criteria for selecting an accounting policy. Now, let's see when can I change an accounting policy? Accounting policy can be changed only in the following two cases. First case tells you can change an accounting policy only when there is a change in statute, law or for better compliance with an accounting standard. Change in statute. Let's say the Companies Act 2013 now says for your company you will no more follow accounting standards. You have to follow India's. India's might, might have other principles. So in that case, you might have to change your accounting policy. Similarly, change with accounting standard. Let's say LIFO is not allowed. So when LIFO is not allowed as an account, accounting policy, you will have to change from LIFO to other methods. Next case, when can I change an accounting policy? Change would result in an appropriate presentation of financial statements. Such a change would lead to better presentation of financial statements. Let's say in the auto sector, if all the companies are following straight line method of depreciation for their plant and machinery, tomorrow they decide they are going to change to WDV. So all the companies in the auto sector will change from SLM to WDV for better presentation of financial statements. So any reason for which they believe that the change would result in better presentation of financial statements. Why will they change? Because the quality, technology of the assets will change. So the usage will vary and then the method will vary. 
These are the reasons for which you can change an accounting policy. This is an important question in exam. These two points are very important. In the previous section we had seen when can a company change its accounting policy. Now we will see three important concepts known as fundamental accounting assumptions. Now it is assumed that company follows all these three whether or not they talk about it. Now in the financial statements if the company does not even mention about these concepts it is still assumed that these concepts are followed. Only when these concepts are not followed, the company has to mention in the financial statement saying we have not followed going concern or consistency or accrual. What is going concern? Going concern states the company will function for a foreseeable future. Now let us say we are in 2020. Assumption is that company does not intend to close down anytime in the near future. They will be functioning for a foreseeable future. What is consistency? Previous year, if you are following SLM in year 1, then in year 2 also, assume that you are consistently following SLM in year 3. You need not mention to them saying every year that I am following SLM. One year if you mention it, it is enough. Only when there is a change, you have to mention that there is a change in consistency. What is accrual? Very basic concept. Let's say credit sales. What is the entry for credit sales? Debtors account debit to sales. We are recording income even before receiving the money. That is the concept of accrual. Interest expense. Even if you don't pay interest amount to bank, you will still account the same in your financial statements. That is the concept of accrual. Income and expense which belongs to a particular financial year should be accounted in the same year. Now, after a company selects an accounting policy, where will it disclose this? In the financial statements, in the notes to account section, they will disclose about the accounting policy. Whenever there is a change in accounting policy, what the company has to disclose is, is there any material effect on the financial statements and how much is it affecting my profits? If such change, you are able to quantify the amount, disclose because of changing from SLM to WDV, so much is my impact on the profit. Let's take a small example. In SLM method, depreciation is 5 lakhs. And after changing to WDV method, let's say the depreciation is 4 lakhs. Now you have to disclose in the financial statements because of change in method of depreciation, my profit has increased by 1 lakh. This kind of a disclosure has to be made in the financial statements. If you cannot quantify the amount of change either in the current period or in the future period, then such a fact has to be disclosed in the financial statement saying there is a change but the amount cannot be quantified. This is about AS1. Thank you.